Stand by to launch FanStream Sports. Three, two, one. Let's start. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to FanStream Sports. Nothing, nothing but pure sports. And welcome, everybody, to FanStream Sports, powered by DSP Media. This is the Fighting Irish Daily Blitz, and I'm your host, Rob Fitoff, also known as RPT. You can find me on Twitter, at P. Fitoff. So for episode 62 today, we will be talking briefly about Notre Dame, since this is called the Fighting Irish Daily Blitz. But I'm going to be giving you advice as we approach March Madness in the next two weeks uh, as you're filling out your brackets. I've done this analysis that I've been thinking over the last month or so. And the data does back it up. And if it helps you, great. If it doesn't, um, so be it. But I thought I'd at least give you some advice on this. So the Notre Dame tie into this, the analysis is going to be as of 1978. That's the one and unfortunately the only time uh, Notre, Dame's, Notre Dame men's basketball made it to the Final Four. It was in St. Louis, March the 25th. The teams were Arkansas, Duke, Kentucky and our fighting Irish. We ended up losing to Duke. And this was before coach K was there. It was before Duke became really Duke. We lost 90 to 86. Looks like it was a nail biter. And then during those times, they also played a consolation game. I wish they would go back to that in the NCAA. Uh, I think the NCAA can make a lot of money off of it. The schools can make a lot of money, the TV networks. And I just think too, for the actual team and players, I know to go to the final four, is an accomplishment in itself. Uh, that's one sport where to make it to the final four, it's like the creme to the creme of where you want to be as a program. Obviously you want to win a national title too, but I just think if there was that consolation game, if you got third place, I know that's not first place, but it is some sort of more of an incentive. Uh, uh, once you get to the final four, if you lose that uh, national semifinal game, now, if you lose that, it really sucks. It's like you get there. Hey, we lost two games, but you still did get to the final four. That'd be the only sort of thing as a player or as a coach or just as a overall fan. It's like, ah, oh, man, we lost both games, but you still, like I said earlier, you did get to the final four. I know if Notre Dame ever got to the final four, which is wishful thinking this year, obviously, and who knows where this program's headed. If we got to the final four, lost that national si semifinal game, but we won the consolation game, I would proudly wear my third place hat and third place t-shirt. So we'll leave it at that right there. Um, after they lost that game, we finished 23 and eight, number 11 in the coaches poll, and then number six in the AP poll. You only had 32 teams in the tournament then. So it was obviously easier to get to the final four because today it's 68 teams. And uh, uh, you have the, the also the, the two play-in games in Dayton. Uh, so Notre Dame for this for this year in 1978, they beat Houston, they beat Utah, and then DePaul, and then went to the Final Four in St. Louis. Uh, coached by Digger Phelps, uh, players of that era or that team uh, of that we know of, or at least I, you probably heard of Bill Lambeer, Kelly Trapuca, Orlando Woolridge, pretty decent NBA players. And I've always said Notre Dame, uh, if you date back to the Digger Phelps uh, era, and even now. Um, with Pat Connaughton, Notre Dame has had its fair share of pretty good to just decent NBA players uh, for those time periods. So I'll digress. So let's get to the analysis right here. So it's going to take place 1978. Last time Notre Dame made to the final four and to just to take a step back, I, I was only two years old at the time. I was still filling up diapers. So I, I do not remember this at all. But prior to this analysis, 1964 to 1975, UCLA won 11 national titles. That will not be part of this analysis. I wanted to start it for when Notre Dame was in the last Final Four. And also those teams from UCLA, they were great teams. But the more we find out, yeah, John Wooden seems like a nice guy, great coach. But there was some shady stuff going on with those UCLA uh, pro or teams. Uh, whether it was buying players, illegal activity, who knows, but those 11 national titles, let's say there could be an asterisk on those. So we're going to start 1978, and I, this is going to take a little bit while to go through. And also, well, let me take a step back. You're thinking, why is this moron in a suit, a, a Madlock suit? Well, one of the few good things about 
COVID, which are very few good things about COVID the last three years during the pandemic. Uh, a lot of people didn't know what to do. You couldn't really do anything. A lot of people started watching old TV shows. I started watching Madlock. I remember as a kid, the show, I didn't watch it that much. My family was always big Andy Griffith show fans. Andy Griffith had his comeback in 1986. The show was on from 86 to 95, which was longer than the Andy Griffith show, which was on from 60 to 68. However, the Andy Griffith show had more episodes. So as I do this analysis, I'm going to be presenting it to the jury like Ben Madlock, Andy Griffith did, along with his uh, uh, assistants or his fellow colleague lawyers, whether it was Linda Pearl, the uh, first season, and then Nancy Stafford, she was my favorite assistant of Ben Madlock. Then Bryn Thayer came along in uh, the later seasons because the first uh, six seasons were filmed in Los Angeles. He then moved it down to North Carolina, his home state. He wanted to be closer to his, uh, he grew up in Mount Airy, but then he loved the Wilmington area. I do too. It's one of the most beautiful places in the USA. Uh, he filmed in Wilmington and then Southport. I love Southport. Would love to live there someday. Just a great area to be around. They filmed a lot of movies there, a lot of TV shows. So in those last, uh, uh, three years, they were filmed in Wilmington, North Carolina. So I'm going to be presenting this to you as Ben Madlock, the spirit of Andy Griffith, uh, the spirit of his, you know, well, Nancy Stafford's still alive. Linda Pearl's still alive. She's actually dating Patrick Duffy of Dallas. Kind of a, I don't want to say a weird combination, but I didn't think those two would go together. But hey, it seems to be working for them. And um so yeah, we'll uh, go from there. And then also, I don't think I mentioned it too, but always like uh, Daniel Roback was on the show in the later years as an investigator. Earlier years, Clarence Gilliard, the third, I believe it's the third. Unfortunately, he sadly passed away uh, last, I believe it was last month or it might've been December. He was also in, he was only, I believe, 68 years old. He he was in Top Gun and the Karate Kid Part 2, Wex, or, or Walker, Texas Ranger. So rest in peace, peace. Clarence Gilliard. So as I read this analysis to you, it's on tiny print right now. Uh, I was prescribed readers this week. I, I had LASIK four years ago, but I do need readers now. So I don't think I ever saw Andy Griffith, whether it was in the Andy Griffith show, Madlock or anything else. I never think I saw him in glasses. So we're going to change it up a little bit, but I'm in my Madlock suit. I got my Notre Dame. There you see my Notre Dame tie for the Notre Dame affiliation. So before I begin here, Whenever you hear EC, that means Eastern Central Time Zone. If you hear MW, that means either the Mountain or Western Time Zone. So I, I repeat, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Counselor RPT, in honor of the late uh, Andy Griffith, Ben Madlock, if you hear EC, Eastern Central Time Zone, Eastern or Central time zone, MW, Mountain or West time zone, EC, Eastern or Central time zone, MW, Mountain or West time zone. Okay, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what I'm going to do right now, this will take a little bit of time, but I want this to get into your head to see where I'm going at here. So from 1978 to 2022, I'm going to give you the the title game for the NCAA men's basketball uh, final four who won and what time zone they were in. So we're going to start 1978. The last time, unfortunately the only time so far Notre Dame was in the final four. So 1978 Kentucky over Duke EC Eastern or central time zone 1979 Michigan over Indiana state or Michigan state over Indiana state EC Louisville over UCLA, EC. That UCLA team was not coached by John Wooden. And that team was actually vacated. Uh, their national runner-up because of some NCAA violations, I found out. 1981, Indiana over North Carolina, EC. 1982, North Carolina over Georgetown, EC. 1983, NC State over Houston, EC, the first time I ever lost a bet, a dollar to my dad. I thought for sure NC State would lose to Houston. One of the greatest uh, championship games of our lifetime when Jim Valvano took the uh, NC State team that never should have won a title, but they somehow found a way to win, kind of like a Hoosiers-type story. 
1984, Georgetown over Houston, EC. 1985, Villanova over Georgetown, EC. 1986, Louisville over Georgetown, EC. Indiana over Syracuse, 1987, EC. 1988, Kansas over Oklahoma, EC. 1989, Michigan over Seton Hall, EC. 1990, UNLV over Duke, MW. That's the first MW you're hearing. 1991, Duke over Kansas, EC. 1992, Duke over Michigan, EC. 1993, UNC over Michigan, EC. Those are those uh, Michigan Fab Five team. Fab Five teams went to two national titles in a row. However, here's a uh, fun fact: they never won a Big Ten title. 1994, Arkansas over Duke, EC. 1995, UCLA over Arkansas, MW. That's the second time you're hearing MW. 1995, Kentucky over Syracuse, EC. 1997, Arizona over Kentucky, MW. The third time you're hearing MW. And this will be the last time you hear MW as I go for the next over, looks like 26 here. 1998, Kentucky over Utah, EC. 1999, Yukon over Duke, EC. 2000, Michigan State over Florida, EC. So we've gone through 1978 to 2000 for 2001 to 2022. Just bear with me here. I want you to hear all these. Duke over Arizona, EC 2001. 2002, Maryland over Indiana, EC. 2003, Syracuse over Kansas, EC. 2004, UConn over Georgia Tech, EC. 2005, North Carolina over Illinois, EC. 2006, Florida over UCLA, EC. 2007, Florida over Ohio State, EC. 2008, Kansas over Memphis, EC. 2009, North Carolina over Michigan State, EC. 2010, Duke over Butler, EC. 2011, UConn over Butler, EC. 2012, Kentucky over Kansas, EC. 2013, Louisville over Michigan, EC. That title was vacated because of NCAA violations, but to me, Louisville was a national title that year. 2014, UConn over Kentucky, EC. 2015, Duke over Wisconsin, EC. 2016, Villanova over North Carolina, EC. 2017, North Carolina over Gonzaga, EC. 2018, Villanova over Michigan, EC. 2019, Virginia over Texas Tech, EC. 2020, COVID year, the tournament was canceled. 2021, everything was played in the Indianapolis area that over those three weeks because of COVID restrictions. Baylor over Gonzaga, EC. 2022, Kansas over North Carolina, EC. This year, the actual Final Four will be played in Houston, which is in the central time zone. So it's the EC uh, combination from what the analysis that I was showing you, whether it was EC or MW. What I'm just trying to say is this year's Final Four, Central time zone, but in the EC category. So of those 44 national title games from 1978 to 2022, three out of the 44 were won by MW teams, whether in the mountain time zone or the West. And those were 1990 UNLV over Duke, 1995 UCLA over Arkansas. And then 1997 was the last time an NW team when Arizona beat Kentucky, the last time an NW team won the national title. So 93% were in the, whether in the Eastern time zone or the central time zone further for the national title game, only six were national runners up two being UCLA two Gonzaga, one Arizona, and then one Utah. I think we can all say UCLA for the most part, they're a, a basketball I don't want to say perennial power, but they're always somewhat in the mix. Uh, they usually have pretty decent teams. 
Gonzaga, they've been a, a factor since 1999. Arizona, going back to the Lute Olson days, always been a factor uh, for basketball. Utah, somewhat of an anomaly. They had pretty good teams with Rick Majerus and the player Keith Van Horn. But ironically, when they were in the title in 1998, uh, that was the year after Keith Van Horn graduated, and they lost to Kentucky in 1998. So of those six teams that I just mentioned, Louisville over UCLA in 1980. UCLA uh, played in the Final Four that year in Indianapolis. However, they were the eighth seed. They played in the West region up until the Final Four. So they were in the same time zone up until the Final Four. So they didn't lose any hours I'm just going to say lose any hours of sleep. We're going to change time uh, in about two weeks here, two, three weeks. Uh, we're, uh, I always say that weekend where we uh, spring forward, we lose an, an hour of sleep. That's how I'm going to kind of phrase this as I go further in this analysis. Uh, so 1998, Kentucky beat Utah. Utah in the mountain time zone, they were playing out West in the West region. So actually... Yes, they were an hour difference, but when they went out west to play, they were uh, actually gaining an hour because they're one hour behind in the west. So pretty much in the same time zone when they made it to the uh, final game. Uh, Duke over Arizona, this was some of an anomaly. Arizona lost to Duke in the uh, 2001 uh, national title game. It was in Minneapolis, and Arizona played in the Midwest region. So when they flew out uh, to the Midwest region to play, Arizona's in that mountain time zone. So they ended up losing an hour, which isn't much, but it's still, as I get further in here into this analysis, they were losing an hour of sleep uh, when they played in that time zone. Florida over UCLA in 2006, UCLA national runner-up, which was played in Indianapolis. However, which is in the uh, central time zone, UCLA, prior to that, played in the West region, so they are playing in the same time zone up until the Final Four, so no losing any hours of sleep. 2017, North Carolina over Gonzaga. Gonzaga was the number one seed in the West, so they played in their same time zone up until the Final Four where they lost one hour. When they played in Phoenix, they just lost one hour of sleep uh, in the Final Four and into the national title game. 2021. Somewhat of an anomaly. That was the year after you know COVID was in its heyday. All those games, whether it was the first round play-in games, second Sweet 16, they were all played in the Indianapolis area, central time zone. So Gonzaga, when they were national runner-up that year, they had about three to four days to get out to Indianapolis to kind of get assimilated to the time zone. So they weren't losing. Yes, they were losing those three hours but they were getting their bodies assimilated to that time zone is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so of those three from 1978 to 2022 that actually won a national title, here's where the data doesn't lie. Of those three teams, two out of the three played in their same time zone through the final four and the national title game. So UNLV over Duke 1990, I believe, cause that was just, they trounced, that was a great UNLV team. They probably should have won it the next year. Uh, they were undefeated until they lost in Indianapolis Final Four to Duke. With that Christian Leitner, Bobby Hurley team, that UNLV team uh, coached by Jerry Tarkanian with Stacey Augman, Larry Johnson, Greg Anthony, Anderson Hunt. They won in Denver, which was the mountain time zone. And Vegas is in that same time zone. UNLV beat Duke. I believe the score is 103 to just trounced Duke by 30 points. I believe it was 103 to 73. UNLV won the national title that year. And they played in their same time zone the entire time. 1995, UCLA beat Arkansas. They are number one West uh, in the West region. So up until the final four, they were in the same time zone. Further, the final four that year and national title game, excuse me, was played in Seattle. Same time zone for UCLA. They never had to go outside their time zone. And they beat Arkansas. So there, two out of two, they were, in the, they were in the same time zone up until the Final Four and into the Final Four and into the national title game. No loss of sleep, same time zone. Here's the anomaly, 1997, Arizona over Kentucky. 
Arizona was in the Southeast region. So Arizona being the mountain time, they lost two hours of sleep playing those first two rounds and into the sweet 16 where they upset, uh, I believe Kansas with the number one overall seed that year. That was a team with Rafe LaFrance, Jacques Vaughn, Paul Pierce coached by, uh, uh, Roy Williams at the time before he went, uh, to North Carolina, they beat Kansas in the sweet 16 in the final four, which was in Indianapolis, which would have been only an hour time zone difference, uh, from what they're in, in Arizona, they end up beating number one seed, uh, North Carolina. And then the championship game, number one, Kentucky, that was the defending champ, 1996 Kentucky team that didn't lose too many people, uh, going into 1997. That was in pretty much the heyday of the Rick Patino years at can or Kentucky, just great teams that year, but they beat three number one seeds. I don't know if that's ever been done before. I need to look that up, but they beat, I repeat, number one seed, Kansas, number one seed, North Carolina in the final four and number one seed Kentucky to win the national title. And they were not playing in their time zone um, up until the final four and into the final four. So that's the anomaly right there, that Arizona team of 1997. So what am I getting at here? So let me repeat one more time. Since 1978, 93% of the national title win winners of men's basketball have been either in the Eastern time zone or the Central time zone. Only 7% have been in the Mountain or Western time zone. I think, for one, it, most of them have been played either Eastern or Central time zone, the final four. But when these teams, let's say in two weeks, the first two rounds are being played here down in Nationwide in Columbus, Ohio. If there is a Western time zone team, let's say it's, even though UCLA probably won't be coming out here, they'll probably be out West. But let's say UCLA, they put them out East and they're a six seed. They won't, but I'm just saying hypothetically, they're a six seed and they play 11 seed team that's either in the Eastern or Central time zone. I'm telling you when you're filling out your brackets, oh wait, they're playing out here in the Eastern time zone and they're the Western time zone. You may want to think about picking them as an upset or further. I always say to Gonzaga, how many times have we seen them as a number one seed? And if they're not playing out West, if they're in a different time zone, whether they're a number one seed or not, they, except for 2017, and 2021, pretty much for Gonzaga over the 19, the best they typically do if they don't get upset in the first two rounds is either Sweet 16 or the Elite Eight. Is that the time zone? I also think it is too. They're in a weaker conference where they're not as tough going into the the, uh, the tournament. But I just think you need to really look at the time zones when you're filling out the bracket. If you're looking at a West Coast team, whether they're playing in the Central time zone or the Eastern time zone, those first two rounds, or whether they um, get to the final four, I think that time zone difference plays with uh, the with your 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 physical or your your physical system was what I'm trying to say. Not to get too much TMI here, but I know these are young kids. But the older we get, I mean, if we go from a different time zone, especially if we're now, if we go from Ohio to California. Yeah, it's a three-hour difference, but you can sleep. Uh, you're more or less, uh, you're gaining three hours, and you have time to catch, or not catch up to the time zone, but get assimilated to the time zone. If you're coming from California to Ohio, you're losing three hours. So your system's off. Uh, the older we get, we want to be more regular in the bathroom uh, each day. I'm sorry, I know that's TMI. But that throws your system off. You know, I know these are young kids. You know, the coaches, they're older than the kids. Maybe they're not, you know, totally wired in during that time and they're not giving the, the kids the grace coaching advice or stuff like that. I really think by doing different, by being in a different time zone that plays with your system, whether it's your physical system, mental system, whatever, or whether it's mentally or that's why I said mentally or physically, I think it's off because of that time change. And the data doesn't lie here. I repeat. Three out of 44 teams have won a national title, whether out they're the Western time zone or the mountain time zone. Pretty much the Eastern and Central time zones have dominated. Now, granted, a lot of those final fours are played in the Eastern and Central time, 
but that makes sense. That's, you know, of these West coast teams that come to those, uh, final four sites, maybe that's why they're not winning. And I really, the only Western time zone has been in those past, uh, since 78 was in Seattle, 1995 for a Western team to UCLA was over Arkansas. Now in 89, when Michigan won it, uh, obviously the Eastern standard time, uh, they beat Seton hall. That was in Seattle as well. I remember that. Uh, but that final four team that year was Michigan, Illinois, Seton hall and Duke. All of those for Eastern central time zone. No, none from the West coast. So when you're filling out your brackets, look at the time zones. If you see a Western or Mountain West team playing out East or central time zone. Now, maybe if they're a number one team, uh, number one seed, they can uh, compensate for the time zone difference. But I really think you got to look at those Western teams. Uh, let's say UCLA is a uh, number one seed, but they put them in the East or the South or whatever. And maybe you want to pick them to be upset. Maybe not the first or second round, but maybe the sweet 16. Uh, but who knows? Let's say if, if UCLA goes to the South, I think they still go by East, West, North, or I, I don't know how, I think it's West region, East region, Midwest, Southeast or South. Let's say they put them South. Maybe they, if they win those first two rounds, they stay in that time zone for the, uh, Maybe they don't go back to school uh, to get assimilated back to the Western coast time is what I'm trying to say. Maybe they just stay out into the South uh, to play the sweet 16. And then if they win that to the elite eight, long story short, I just look when you're filling out your brackets, really look what time zone a particular team is playing in. And if they're playing and what time zone they play in the regular season, because as the data shows, you're you're better off picking uh, Eastern or Central time zone, uh, period. So let me go over my notes here. Uh, so yeah, th th I want to just do a, a special edition here because us being Notre Dame fans, yeah, we have the women's team. I think, you know, there's a potential they can go far this year. Filling out the women's bracket is a little bit more predictable. But for, you know, the men's, we're not going to have even an NIT bracket to fill out this year. Yes, I know technically if Notre Dame won the ACC tournament, they would even if they had a losing record, they would make the uh they would make the March Madness tournament. And they always say never say never. Well, I'm saying never right now. That's not going to happen. We have a better chance of Jack Swarbrick or Ron Paul's opening up the checkbook finally to pay an assistant football coach the money they deserve. Too soon, my fellow Irish fans. You know I'm right, though. I'm pretty much dead on right there. So we have a better chance of uh, them opening up the checkbook, you know, Mr. Swarbrick, Mr. Paulus, uh, for that happening than for uh, Irish men to uh, men's basketball to make the uh, tournament this year. So I hope this uh, I hope this information was helpful to you. I want to reiterate, too, this year's Final Four is in the central time zone. So, you know, Houston's been a pretty uh, – probably the most solid team this year. I know they're in a weaker conference. Uh, they've been number one for the most part, the most this year. So they may, we may have a hometown team playing in the final four this year, but to, to reiterate the final four is in the central time zone this year in Houston. Uh, and I think it's a wide open year too. the blue bloods, you know, Kentucky's fighting for their lives to get into the tournament this year, North Carolina, may be the first preseason number one team to not make the tournament. That should be crazy. I mean, I thought they'd be, uh, Damn near unbeaten. I want to say unbeatable, but pretty damn good this year. They had everybody back except uh, Brady Manick, the guy that looked like Larry Bird. Uh, Larry, Bird, I don't know if Larry Bird has any sons, but he looks like the spitting image if Larry Bird had a son. Uh, great shooter for them last year and a transfer uh, graduate from Oklahoma. Just that one loss for, from his great shooting has just put them somewhat of a tailspin. This, I mean, Notre Dame almost beat them. They should have beat them uh, this past Wednesday in Dennett's. Uh, but they're uh, fighting for their lives right now to make it into the uh, to the tournament. Duke's not that great. They'll probably be about an 8-9 seed. But I'm just trying to say this is a wide-open tournament this year. So uh, if you want to take my advice, that's fine. If not, but uh, uh, as I said before, I just don't think the data lies right now. So ladies and gentlemen of the jury, uh, this is your counselor, RPT, in honor of 
the late uh, Andy Griffith, who played Ben Madlock. Thank you so much for joining. And as always, go Irish. <laughs>